and now this is the day to begin a new chapter and this is the alien planet the green movement uh, this i think by the title itself you can very well understand you what this uh, chapter might convey to you and good morning sir to us yeah good morning and i'll take your attendance only at the end let us uh, just begin the class because it has already taken a bit of time for madam to finish off uh, with your class and uh, so you don't have to miss the class in the meanwhile you have to be till the end of the class uh, so that at the end of the class only whenever i am taking attendance uh, you have to mark yourself present there fine so uh, this chapter is of course written by nani palkiwala and it's a news uh, which had got published uh, in the times of india that also reference do you get in this chapter how uh, which year was it um, actually published and uh, uh, you know what actually it revealed to us well whenever do we uh, read such reports uh, then do we come to know uh, what is happening there uh, you know either in the country or in many countries of the world and uh, what are the issues that of uh, present time are there that we all are facing so uh, for example when we just talk about no pandemic era this um, time when we talk about uh, um, if the report is published then you will find out that more than 60% of people this is my opinion more than 60% of people i mean to say students are still not getting the benefit of online teaching because they don't have those facilities available to the extent that they somehow manage go to the school you know when it was a physical school they somehow could just manage reaching over there but um, for those people who are you know able to manage that means uh, take online classes because they have got system available they have got a net available there may be one scenario where you might come to know in their uh, you know village not even electricity is available so somehow they would go to the school that you would be day school and at such a time uh, when uh, the government thinks of conducting uh, you know the examination without giving them the classes so it is uh, you know nearly impossible so minimum days of classes would be required other than that without that there is no possibility of you know taking the examination so this is my opinion this is i said can be a report if it is published so uh, it may reveal many other facts too you know like in one family there were uh, two or three siblings and how they just managed somehow taking their classes when it came for online thing and uh, there were many who uh, you know had committed suicide because they did not have money even to eat so what about study so children are left to nobody isn't it so this is this can also be one thing that uh, we may uh, later on might come to know in the report when uh, they are published but having read the report what do we understand is the seriousness of the issue like uh, at this moment i do understand even well, the last class was there it was uh, about 50 minutes maybe even more so uh, you might have felt uh, you know it is too much uh, you know going on now after this class and other classes coming and that was mine and uh, you have to be there you know present so this is from your one part of it how long you can get yourself exposed to the screen that is what you can just claim and uh, also blame but uh, there is another scenario wherein the children wanted to learn but there was no facility available so many such facts can be made available through the reports and by this we uh, get to know how the issue had become a bit serious how you know things had become uh, sometimes out of reach of uh, many poor people and uh, how it contributed to the whole world whether to the loss or whether to you know psychological disturbances and all such things that do we come across that do we do we learn well this report especially tells um, something about the planet that is the whole uh, you know uh, world of earth that we talk about um, the whole ecosystem that we talk about that how it can have its uh, you know uh, bad time soon to come and if it has its own bad time naturally it's a bad time for the human race of course it is for you know all other species but when we talk about you know the whole world the existence of the whole world then we say ki human beings are the supreme creatures so for those su supreme creatures also there can be lot of problems well let us now see uh, what are the things over there 
So there are some terms which would be commonly uh, you know used over here, and those meaning of those terms we'll see at the end. Because while reading it, most of the time those meanings are uh, quite cl clear to you. Because it happens like when you read the newspaper. Uh, not everything uh, is known to you. Not all the words or the, even the vocabulary is known to you. But as you proceed, uh, in the context, do you get its meaning? Then gradually, by uh, habitual reading of it, I think uh, you can get the meaning of most of the things, most of the uh, terms. So there is one word, the holistic and ecological view. One is talked about over here. Second is sustainable development. Next is talked about language. Next is talk about ignominious darkness. Then uh, inter alia is another thing. Uh, decimated is another uh, term. Then catastrophic depletion, a term exactly. So what does it mean? And transcending concern. So these terms we'll get to know. And I think uh, for one or two, you might know exactly the meaning. Uh, I'll tell you its meaning in the course of its reading or at the end of the chapter. And then I'll ask you even to frame some sentences. Well, now the background of the chapter is given in the italics. Let's just read it out. The following article was written by Nani Palkiwala and published in the Indian Express on 24th November 1994. So almost like um, 20 years uh, time, you can say, if not exactly 20 years, nearing 20 years. So 17, 18 years time has already gone after reading this. And um, uh, after writing this, I mean to say, now when we read it out, we'll come to know after those many years, now what more changes have taken place? Of course, those changes uh, in science and technology, industry, uh, living style, and then the change world over globalism and all, all those things in the um, last, you can say, 15 to 20 years time, they also must have contributed uh, to this problem, to make this problem even more serious because when, when the things do we read over here in this chapter do we come to know it is already so serious kind of issue and later on when we uh, just want to know it uh, what must have happened over the years so it must have become even more disastrous it must have the problem must have become even more catastrophic and the issues that he raised uh, regarding the declining you know declining health of the earth Declining is reducing, um, getting down day by day. That means getting deteriorated day by day, how it is becoming worse. So this, uh, you know, he talked about and uh, of the earth and of the earth continue to have relevance. So even today, its relevance is there. I think since uh, this book must have been published and this article must have got published here in this book, uh, since then, this chapter has not been deleted. It is all because he, you people and uh, even uh, I take even myself, so whoever is the reader of this text becomes, uh, you know, concerned about this issue, feels uh, there has been a lot of damage done to the environment. <clears throat> just before coming to your class, I just um, got one WhatsApp message wherein there was something about um, the celebrations that we do over the years. And how all those celebrations, because they are part of our custom, it also contributes to our poverty. And there was, you know, something about the environment also when it talked, it was talked about Holi and then all the festivals which are celebrated. So uh, they are there mostly uh, done on the banks of the rivers and so many things are thrown over there. So uh, then later on, we will have to start um, some movement for the cleaning of uh, campaigns, actually cleaning of those rivers and all. So it is all, um, he said, you know, the one who created that video said he, how uh, some practices of ours, they are actually the cause of our poverty and the state of this country. So uh, it's a different perspective, you know, so it uh, actually uh, makes you think from even that particular point of view from the, for this chapter, as we just go through it, it also makes us see uh, how it um, is making us uh, realize how important this issue is of environment. So I'm just proceeding now with uh, line number one. You also get your text open at page number 43 and just follow me. One cannot recall any movement in world history which has gripped the imagination of the entire human race so completely and so rapidly as the green movement, which started nearly 25 years ago. 
In 1972, the world's first nationwide Green Party was founded in New Zealand. Since then, the movement has not looked back. So, introduction actually we got here of what the writer is, you know, trying to you know raise issue about. It is something about the Green Movement. Uh, the issue which the Green Movement raised, it was, uh, you know, long since. And he says, in no other issue, the human race, when we talk about human race, then it is not just about, uh, you know, only our country, India, or it is only about Bangladesh, or it is only about America, or it is only about, you know, Australia. It's not just like that. It's all about, you know, all the countries, because it's the issue pertains to human race. It pertains to human beings, to the existence of human beings. For example, uh, coronavirus is an issue which is for the whole world. So it is for the existence of humanity itself. So it cannot be uh, demeaned or it cannot be taken as an ordinary issue because it is uh, ultimately about uh, the supreme creation of God or we can say the most uh, valuable creature on, the, on this planet is human being and that very uh, creature is facing a kind of threat. And that is why even the issue of uh, pandemic of this one, COVID-19, has become really so important. Similarly, of course, I talked about, you know, related it to the present event. But uh, any such issue, I mean to say, which is important to everyone, to all the countries, and that therefore cannot be ordinary. For example, terrorism is an issue for all the countries. You cannot just say that only India is facing this, uh, you know, problem. There are many countries in the world they are also suffering from this, uh, you know, huge problem. Poverty, of course, in many countries, this is the issue. But, uh, you know, more common than the issue of poverty is terrorism. More common than the poverty uh, is the issue of environment. Because uh, if the, you know, earth is at threat, uh, automatically, I mean to say, consequently, the existence of human being is also at threat. Uh, you, uh, Edwin just left his meeting. And uh, at the time of taking the attendance only, I will have to see. Because I, as I told you, now I'm not going to take attendance. I'll take your attendance only at the end. So uh, that does not mean you just leave the meeting in, in the meanwhile and just get back only at the end. Fine. So there is something about a um, uh, you know, party which was established in New Zealand. It, is, it was in 1972. And since then, this movement has not looked back. So since then, the movement has not looked back. We have shifted one hopes irrevocably <clears throat> from the mechanistic view of a holistic ecological view. Holistic is overall complete. Ecological view of the world. It is a shift in human perception as revolutionary as that introduced by Copernicus, who taught mankind in the 17th century that the earth and the other planets revolved around the sun. So, since it is uh, an article, it uh, also makes uh, the point of the writer emphatic by mentioning some examples. So here the writer, of course, makes now, I'll just start with the example. The example of Copernicus is mentioned over here, Nicholas Copernicus. He, um, for the first time, told the whole world in the 16th century, uh, it is, Earth is not at the center of the solar system. What he told? The sun is stationary. The sun does not move. And all other planets, including the earth, they revolve around the earth. I think this the earlier perception as we go by scriptures. Uh, so the perception here was uh, the earth is at the center and all other planets revolve around the earth. For Indian mythology, when we go, we were also told that this whole world the silly applicant to me, Nag Panchami is celebrated in order to, uh, you know, pray tribute to uh, God snake. And because what we believe is if the earth, this is the earth suppose, it is there resting on the hood of the snake. Shesh Nag ke hood par it, you know, stays is our mythological belief. And it is immediately shaken up because it is proved by the fact it's not so. The fact is entirely different. The fact is, 
the uh, sun is actually stationary. It is at uh, one specific uh, place and all of the planets revolve around the sun, including the earth itself. So where is the question of, you know, on the hood of the snake, the earth rests? There is no question as such. So uh, this is how, <coughs> since the 16th century, I think you just imagine, you know, now we have no question about it. Now we don't even talk about it. The reason is it has already become uh, an established truth that what is the, uh, you know, which particular planet is at the center and um, who revolve around that particular, which the planets actually revolve around that particular uh, planet. That is already now very clear for us because centuries time has gone over the over 400, uh, 4.5 centuries time has already lapsed. Now it has become a generalized truth. But there was a time you can imagine when Copernicus had mentioned this fact, nobody believed him. You know, people considered him to be a madman. But now the fact is different. The story is different. The reality is different. And therefore, I mean to say, he, when the writer must have written this, uh, you know, something about uh, the green movement. So it is for the first time the whole world was shaken up. <clears throat> The whole world came together when this party in 1972 was established, the Green Movement when started. And since then, they did not give up this issue because it is the question of everyone's existence. It is the question of the human race itself, you know, whether it is safe or it is going to face a lot of danger. See what happened in uh, 17th and 18th century onwards, as industrialization started in uh, Western countries and European countries, so they started taking the resources right from uh, the nature itself and they never thought of restoring you know those resources back so those i I'll, I'll, uh, those people who are present over here please remind all of them those who have left the meeting that their attendance will not be considered unless they are there at the time uh, i just make it any point of time if i take the attendance if they are not there i'll not consider them to be present so for the first time in human history, there is a growing worldwide consciousness that the earth itself is a living organism. So we don't have to consider earth is only as an entity, is only as an object. It's not so. It's a living organism they consider it to be. And we all are actually living on the earth. So the earth itself is a living organism, therefore. Okay. So it may uh, also face some hazards, health hazards it may face. And its health also may get deteriorated. That's what, you know, the writer wants to convey. So growing consciousness has worldwide, you know, open up that the earth itself is a living organism, an enormous being of which we are parts. So it has its own metabolic needs and vital processes which need to be respected and preserved. So uh, what became clear by this, it not only earth is a living organism, a gigantic organism, a big organism, but beyond that, there are if it's some uh, something or you call you just name an organism so it has its need it needs it uh, food it needs its uh, you know other environment unless those things are available that organism cannot survive and human being needs all the things from the earth the earth itself is supposed when considered to be a living organism so it needs a peculiar environment a specific environment does it need and in lack of that environment the earth cannot survive the earth has a threat to its survival. That's what you know, the writer wants to convey. Fine. <clears throat> so for the first time in human history, there is a growing worldwide consciousness that the earth itself is a living organism, an enormous being of which we are parts. So it has its own metabolic needs and vital processes which need to be respected and preserved. The earth's vital signs reveal a patient, uh, a patient in declining health, we have begun to realize our ethical obligations, ethical that is moral, obligations are duties, our ethical obligations to be good stewards, good stewards, stewards with the servants, good stewards of the planet and responsible trustees, trustees who take care of a legacy, of the legacy of uh, two future generations. I think this point, let us try to understand what the writer wants to say about vital processes and all uh, as a living organism, uh, you could understand and relate. Now, this point says 
कि द अर्थ वाइटल साइंस रिवील अ पेशेंट इन डिक्लाइनिंग हेल्थ तो इट अपीयर्स दैट द अर्थ इज लाइक अ पेशेंट एंड इट्स हेल्थ इज डिटेरिएटिंग इट इज डिक्लाइनिंग इट इज बिकमिंग वीक डे बाय डे एंड now what are our responsibilities our responsibilities as human beings what are the so we have begun to realize that there are uh, our duties uh, our obligations which we have to follow which we need to follow to be good stewards so what should we be we should be good stewards stewards matlab servants we should be good stewards of the planet and responsible trustees and we should be the responsible trustees too okay yeah. trustees matlab for example uh, let us take uh, atomic energy center school number 4 uh, many principals come and go so what is their role their role is to maintain the decorum of the school the infrastructure of the school the facilities for children and uh, in order to uh, make it you know get passed on to the next uh, generation to the next principal to look after it is the responsibility of a principal similarly you can understand the earth the whole earth is as if they are in our hands and we are there the trustees of this earth what is our responsibility it is not our property let us therefore understand as i told you ki acs number 4 is there in the hands of the principal so it is not his personal property it is the property of a trust or you can say it is property of an organization and he is there a caretaker similarly you and i will have to therefore work or act as trustees and therefore we have our responsibilities we have to take care of the earth because the earth is not our own possession we are there just to take care of the earth and then give it on to the next generation so how it should be it should be properly maintained we cannot uh, you know uh, make the condition of the earth the worst and can give it to somebody else it is not possible and it is not uh, advocate and it is not uh, i mean to say nobody can like in the bad condition the earth can be passed on to another fellow so this is what we need to understand ki we are there to look after this earth for the coming generation for the future generation then that is our duty then the concept of sustainable development now the point here comes something about uh, you know Uh, development and uh, then i talked about industrialization when we talk of the modern world uh, the world that uh, actually we are living in so there are many things without uh, which we cannot survive let's take example of electricity uh, then let's take example of modern gadgets like refrigerator uh, then take uh, you know the acs coolers fans and there are so many things for which we need to consume lot of electricity and all these things are actually contributing to the global warming now uh, without that we cannot survive so what need we do so now what we need do is we will have to find out a solution like pollution also gets uh, you know added to the whole environment because of the vehicles number of vehicles coming on uh, to the roads now what is to be done so uh in big cities where population um, is too much and where pollution has also increased rapidly they have found out a solution uh, i think um, some uh, battery oriented i think ethanol or ethanol oriented some uh, buses are introduced there in places like delhi mumbai and they do not use now diesel so uh, by that what they have done of course development was there which now became incumbent i mean to say uh, it cannot be altered now uh, to sustain it to keep it we will have to find out a solution wherein lesser damage can be done to the environment so the lesser damage can uh, come by you know replacing the one which is uh, the source which is actually contributing more to the damage of the environment so that was uh, you know the diesel so they made it uh, this one and then they brought uh, you know instead of uh, they uh, thought of a system but in instead of personal vehicles if people can commute in uh, public uh, you know transport it would also reduce to the number of you know vehicles on the road and therefore it would also reduce the level of pollution in their places therefore you will find local tra trains very common uh, metro trains very common and public transport very common in 
uh, places like uh, Mumbai, Bangalore, Delhi, and uh, maybe Calcutta. So, uh, because uh, the change was required, we could not survive now without those, uh, you know, availability of resources. So, what can be done? So, the best thing that can be done is you minimize the damage. That is what they, you know, uh, he talks about the concept of sustainable development. The moment we talk about development, resources do we need? You know, those things which are, are uh, contributory to the development of the environment, those things, of course, do we need. So what did we do? We now must try to minimize the damage. The lesser, you know, the better it is for the future generation. Without this, we cannot survive. For example, there was a time when uh, it was considered that mobile is uh, something which is adding to the, you know, complete damage to the whole environment. Of course it is. But now what is, uh, it is the need of the because online classes and then all the things that you are handy, everything has to be handy. So all your documents do you store there in this drive here, there, you know, on net do you um, store it. So when all these things are being done, naturally you are, what you are doing is you are now looking after sustainable kind of thing, the minimal damage we are, you are trying to, you know, do. Because damage will be there, but you don't have to just see to it that whatever the damage was done and in the future also let the same thing continue. It has to have some kind of control and some regulation. Therefore, the concept of sustainable development was popularized in 1987 by the World Commission on Environment and Development. So this is all in sequence of, you can say, the Green Movement. The Green Movement when it started in 1972, and the party was established over there in New Zealand. Since then, it the whole world has become concerned about it. And the whole world wants to see to it that there is minimal damage done to the environment. So what did they say? Do the World Commission on Environment, what did they say? Sustainable development is a concept which would be very useful uh, to see the future generation also getting benefited. Then uh, in this report, it defined the idea of development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their need. That is, without stripping the natural world of resources, future generations would need. I think the same thing I talked to you. It is something about the future generation uh, when it has to uh, get the world handed uh, to them. So how it would be done, that is, uh, by giving it a better world, if not better, the least damaged one. And this is all possible by making efforts by all the countries of the world, because it's not just uh, an issue of one particular country. It is the issue of all the countries of the world, and they would have to, you know, uh, therefore be responsible about it. Therefore, international laws are there. You cannot now damage the environment. You cannot produce the technology which is harmful to the environment. And similarly, here also in our country now, we have also become a bit concerned about this kind of issues. And so the manufacturers now also taking care of it uh, because the government is there to look after all the you know possibilities and then giving them a green signal for the production of uh, some products. So unless they meet the requirement uh, of you know keeping the environment safe, they do not give them the license or they do not give them. And then, of course, you, when you talk about all this uh, issue of um, uh, corruption can rise. That is a secondary for me, uh, because here it is not the issue to be talked about. Well, now, in the zoo of Lusaka, uh, Zambia, uh, one more point, of course, I would just tell you of the last paragraph. So whatever the development do we need? Natural resources we will have to you know, go back to. We need water. We need, uh, uh, you know, uh, the products, maybe if it is agricultural kind of thing. So those agricultural products, do we need? So where do, are they coming from? They are right coming from the, um, uh, you know, earth itself. Ultimately, all the resources, you know, um, uh, may it be land, may it be, you know, the water, may it be the environment required for it. All those things are we extracting from the natural resources. It has its own limitation, you know. So... We will have to, therefore, be concerned about it. So whatever is being done, let us minimize. Therefore, now, I think in physics, it is something about nanotechnology also has come into existence. Now, electric charged um, vehicles also have come into existence. So these things, they reduce, um, you know, the 
damage to the environment. Now, next point. In the zoo of Lusaka, Zambia, there is a cage where the notice reads, the world's most dangerous animal. Inside the cage, there is no animal but a mirror where you see yourself. Thanks to the efforts of a number of agencies in different countries, a new awareness has now dawned upon the most dangerous animal in the world. He has realized the wisdom of shifting from a system based on domination to one based on partnership. Now, uh, there is a reference on this. Generally, some questions are asked. There is a zoo in uh, Zambia. Lusaka is the name of the place. So there, there is a zoo. And uh, in that zoo, uh, there is a notice at one place displayed. And it says, the world's most dangerous animal. Dunya ka sabse katarnaak prani. So naturally, we will have the desire just to have a look. And we are we are already safe uh, once we are there in the zoo because we know they are tamed animals or they are caged animals. So what is uh, there when the once uh, one person suppose enters over there, what will he find? He will not find any animal over there. A mirror is kept there. And once you just peep into that, what do you see? Your own reflection. And the board is written over it. The world's most dangerous animal, and actually we are the most dangerous one. All the animals, they uh, do not extend their limits. But we extend all our limits. And it is all because of us, only the threat is there to the whole world. The earth faces uh, a bit of a decline, a bit of a major decline instead, I must say. And this is all, uh, if we had not manipulated with the natural resources, or we had not uh, you know, damaged uh, the environment, Maybe the condition of the earth would not have been today as it is at present. Uh, some 10 years before, we were facing even mm, bigger problems. Now, of course, we have all the countries of the world have become a bit uh, you know, concerned about this issue, issue. And therefore, we have controlled it. But suppose you, you know, cut um, uh, one forest area. To make that place forest, years time, not one or two years, maybe decades time is required and in a day or two we just finish off the whole forest this is something wrong and then we uh, you know burn some uh, leaves also and um, the dry material that we uh, burn uh, irresponsibly instead i must say that also leads to uh, pollution there in the environment and the people those who suffer from the diseases like that of lungs and all they face even more problems the, of course, all those problems started by man, comes back to man. So who started all this problem? This is started by man. That's why when you go to the zoo of Lusaka, you find yourself and it trades the world's most dangerous animal. You see, the more powerful animals also we have controlled. So who is more powerful and more dangerous? It is the human being. And they say inside there is a cage and then we see other thanks to the efforts of a number of agencies in different countries. It's only because of some agencies in the whole world that they have come forward or else what would have happened uh, in different countries. A new awareness has now dawned upon. Dawned like, for example, the dawn of the day takes place. All of a sudden now, as if all the countries of the world now are realizing, are waking up, mm, dawned upon the most dangerous animal in the world. Now that this most dangerous animal, human being, is now able to understand. And this is all because of the efforts made by most countries in the world. Now people are joining. Okay, now 37 it has turned out to be. Animals of the world. And he has realized the wisdom of shifting from a system based on domination to one based on partnership. So what have uh, you know we realized now? He, the human means that is the most dangerous animal. What has it realized? It is nothing to, uh, you know, it is nothing about, uh, you can say, a, who is the monarch of this particular place or of the whole world or of the universe it is that question is not this now all the human beings from all the countries of the world it is their responsibility to see that they have to uh, you know become the partners in maintenance of the earth they have to become partner in carrying forward this movement this green movement and then uh, saving the environment because it is a joint responsibility of everyone to pass on, you know, the, your, um, uh, you can say, uh, something called legacy 
from one generation to another instead you have to make it better which we are probably not making it better but in terms of environment i mean to say in terms of technology of course we are trying you know becoming a uh, better day by day we are advancing day by day but all these things if they are leading to such a horrible kind of situation therefore you know we have to be a bit cautious about okay i think uh, for today i must i must